The Queen has always used her wit and charm to put people at ease when in her presence. And never has that been clearer than during Friday's G7 summit, where the Queen hosted a royal evening reception with seven world leaders. She will host Joe Biden later on this week. The Queen may still be mourning the death of her late husband, Prince Philip, who passed away last month, but Her Majesty proved she's not lost her sense of humor by sharing a joke with the world leaders. She drew laughter from her guests as she chided them during a group photo session. Are you supposed to be looking as if you're enjoying yourself? To which the UK's Prime Minister replied, Yes, we have been enjoying ourselves. Earlier on in the day the Queen could be seen sharing a giggle with the Duchess of Cambridge and the Duchess of Cornwall as she ignored advice and insisted on using a ceremonial sword to cut cake. The three royals were meeting local volunteers of the Cornish community to recognize their support for each other during the COVID-19 pandemic. The Queen was presented with a giant cake to mark her official birthday and opted to use a huge sword to cut it, as opposed to a knife. A video from the cheeky moment shows Her Majesty pausing as someone off camera reminds her there is a knife. I know there is, the Queen quipped back before stating she wanted to use something more unusual. Even Duchess Camilla got in on the cake cutting action, assisting Her Majesty in perfecting the first perfectly sliced piece. That looks very good, Queen Elizabeth stated proudly once they were finished. It's nice to see the Queen in such high spirits after what has no doubt been a difficult week marking what would have been Prince Philip's 100th birthday. Fresh from charming leaders at the Group of Seven Summit, Queen Elizabeth II was back at her residence at Windsor Castle on Saturday to view a military parade marking her official birthday. The 95-year-old monarch sat on a dais to watch the ceremony that despite ongoing social distancing restrictions did not disappoint on the pomp and pageantry front. For today's celebration, the Queen opted for a pale grey blue coat with yellow details by her dresser Angela Kelly, which she paired with a matching hat, white gloves, and an aquamarine brooch. It was the same ensemble she had worn just a few weeks earlier at the state opening of Parliament in April. It was her third wearing of the coat, which she first donned in 2019. Via Insider, the monarch's outfits are worn in public no more than twice, after which they are either remodeled or reserved for private gatherings. Her staff also keeps careful track of her outfits so as to avoid her wearing the same ones too close together. It might be two or three years between wearings for any single dress or coat. That's why the Queen's appearance at her annual Trooping the Color birthday celebration raised more than a few eyebrows as the repeated ensemble followed an old tradition. It seems the Queen may have been observing an etiquette custom dating back a couple of centuries. Following the example of Queen Victoria, who stayed in permanent mourning after the death of Prince Albert, widows would wear only black mourning clothes for the first two years after their husband's passing. After this period, they were expected to wear second mourning clothes in understated colors such as gray and lilac. Although she has returned to her customary bright toned dresses and dress coats for events such as the G7 summit and the reception for next year's Big Lunch Jubilee coordinators, the Queen is following the morning color profile for official royal events such as trooping the color. It's a subtle way of showing the world that her beloved Prince Philip is never far from her thoughts. Having lived through such historical lean times as World War II, Elizabeth is also a thrifty woman, so she may have preferred not to go to the expense of commissioning a special muted color coat solely for her birthday parade. If she was tired after meeting G7 leaders, including President Joe Biden, on Friday evening, it didn't show. She was seen beaming from ear to ear as the nine planes of the Royal Air Force's Red Arrows flew past in formation and let loose their red, white and blue smoke. One of the major parts of the Queen's official birthday is her award of honors to those deemed to have made a positive contribution to society. The traditional Trooping the Color ceremony is normally staged in London and features hundreds of servicemen and women and thousands of spectators. However, for the second year running that was not possible and it was a slimmed-down affair in the grounds of Windsor Castle, which is around 27 miles west of the capital. Dubbed a mini Trooping the Color, it featured soldiers in ceremonial scarlet coats and bearskin hats. The servicemen and women on parade numbered almost 275 with 70 horses, compared with the 85 soldiers who took part in the ceremony last summer. A handful of seated guests lined part of the quadrangle, 
a change from last year when only the military was present. The ceremony originated from traditional preparations for battle. The colors, or flags, were, trooped, or carried down the lines of soldiers, so they could be seen and recognized in battle. President Biden and First Lady Jill Biden will share afternoon tea with Queen Elizabeth II at Windsor Castle on Sunday. The Queen is a fantastic supporter of horse racing. And Queen's horse wins, poignant, race on date of Prince Philip's 100th birthday. In the past three decades, Queen Elizabeth II has made over $8.8 million from the horse racing prize money. These figures have been brought to the world by the British Horse Racing Authority show. While this year, the Queen made a whopping $542,531 through her 20 victories, it was 2016 that has proven to be the most successful year for the Queen in the recent decades. Last year, the monarch made a total of $731,413. Lady Louise Windsor is a keen horse rider and carriage driver and she is set to show off her talents at next month's Royal Windsor Horse Show. She is also a granddaughter of Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip, who is the elder child of Prince Edward and Sophie, and is 15th in the line of succession to the British throne. In a report written by the Daily Mail's John Eden, he revealed that she would be one of the competitors at the four-day event. A family source told the journalist that although the 17-year-old is, naturally very shy, she wanted to do something to, make everybody proud. The young royal has already competed in major events, achieving third place at the same event in 2019. In an virtual interview last May at the Royal Windsor Horse Show, Louise's mother, the Countess of Wessex, said of her daughter's carriage-driving talents, she is naturally so good at it, she really is. It's something that she has taken to very well. It's not currently known if she'll use the carriage and ponies that she inherited following the death of her grandfather, Prince Philip, on 9 April. In another royal news, Princess Anne broke an unofficial royal rule as she gave her first public interview since the passing of her father, Prince Philip. The princess praised Prince Philip's, make do and mend, attitude but royal fans were disappointed that they didn't see more, behind the scenes during the interview. The recording came from a sparsely decorated room that seemed a far cry from the homely parlor seen in other videos with all the ornaments and personal touches blurred into the background. And as the UK basked in glorious sunshine, Princess Anne wore her favorite black suede boots, natural tights and formal wool suit to present a special centenary award of the Prince Philip Medal to Dr. Gladys West at her home in Virginia, USA. However one eagle-eyed royalist was quick to notice that the Princess Royal crossed her legs during the socially distanced TV interview with ITV royal correspondent Chris Ship on the day her father would have marked his 100th birthday. The princess did not break any hard and fast written rule when she was pictured sitting in a chair as she presented the medal from the Royal Academy of Engineering. But female royals usually favor the modest and flattering, duchess slant, when wearing a skirt, or at least straight-legged. Etiquette expert Mika Meyer said that it was because most royals adopted the duchess slant which involves putting your knees and ankles together, slanting your legs to the side, and placing your hands on your lap. Thank you for watching. If you liked, feel free to leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to get new video updates. We will update the latest videos about the royal family every day. Thanks and goodbye.